James Kaufman, World News Report, today, October 10th, 2024. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Well, wouldn't you know it, it looks like the geomagnetic storm came much earlier than predicted. The last one took 90 hours plus to reach Earth, but this one got here in less than 48 hours? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I believe this is from the first X-Flare, and we haven't yet seen what the second X-Flare that caused the proton storm and the polar cap absorption event is going to do yet. We're currently in a severe, if not stronger, geomagnetic storm. Looking at our boulder index, we're looking at a KP8, a severe geomagnetic storm. Next to our Frederick's KP index, also a KP8, a severe geomagnetic storm. To our estimated planetary KP index, updated and used exclusively by NOAA and NASA, a KP8.33, a severe geomagnetic storm. And to top them all off, our college index, a KP9, severe geomagnetic storm. They say that the ground is electric beneath us. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we didn't see a proton storm. We didn't see a polar cap absorption event from this double X flare here on the 7th. But I believe this may be what is impacting us today. If not, what happened on October 9th moved awful fast and impacted us within 24 to 30 hours. It was a very strong storm. We did have two X flares that day, as in yesterday, the 1.84 and the 1.4. We had a 2 plus X flare here, followed by a bump, an X1 flare here. I believe this must be coming from that flare, although again, it didn't produce a proton storm didn't produce a solar storm it didn't produce a polar cap absorption event like this flare did here both of them were directly earth facing and generated by sunspot ar3848 this flare right here also happening yesterday was actually generated by another sunspot ar3844 that was on the departing limb. And we had a strong, strong M-class solar flare also generated from the departing limb after that late yesterday. Now we did have an uptick in our proton count with the two X flares on the 8th. But the X flare, the 1.84 X flare that happened early yesterday on the 9th really really pushed the proton count up and over the space where the threshold and we've been in a proton storm and solar storm ever since which has caused a polar cap absorption event now it looks like it's subsiding slowly but ladies and gentlemen this is a severe geomagnetic storm that we're currently in We've had no real Earth-facing strong solar flares, according to our ghost X-ray flux. This is the proton storm. All the white dots were caused from, well, I believe were caused from the X1.84 solar flare that happened early yesterday on the 9th. Now, of course, the huge light in the sky is Comet T Atlas. And it supposedly brightened as it crossed in front of the sun here. Although many astrologers thought that the tail might be just disintegrated by the large solar flare, coronal mass ejection, and proton storm. That did not happen. It actually got brighter. Here we can see the X1.84 that this impact must have come from about well only about 48 hours ago we've had another flare in between that one 
and the M777 here. And the sunspot I believe these came from was 3848, whereas the other sunspot that generated solar flares, the other X flare, is actually gone around the far limb and was either 3844 or 3842, very hard to determine, almost on top of one another. Meanwhile, we're still in a huge polar cap absorption event, one of the strongest ones I have ever seen. Look at this radio alternation. Can't believe it's just so enforced and reinforced. Unbelievable. And this just covers the last several hours. I believe that this might be the strongest polar cap absorption event that we have seen off of a measly 1.84 X flare. Well, we got nothing off the 9.15 X flare and the 7.6 X flare. I have lots of questions about those two X flares and if they ever even really occurred. Now, I wanted to do a deep dive to the actual data itself. We're at Discover Real Time Solar Wind Satellite, our newest solar wind satellite. And I was looking for a real impact here. But what I found was plasma only reached right at 21 centimeters cubed. Now, solar winds jumped up quite a bit. We had a peak here of 800 kilometers per second. Some serious solar winds. So we had a CME that was mostly made up of solar winds. Or was this sent by the coral hole that's basically Earth-facing in the northern hemisphere? That could be, in fact, what we're seeing here. Instead of the impact from the x flare, that would be awful quick to arrive, if that be the case. Plasma of 22.13, I think, is the highest print I see here. You can see temperatures, plasma, and solar winds all move up at the same time. And I'm just not seeing enough plasma here to be in a severe, a severe geomagnetic storm. It just doesn't make any sense. Now, I was expecting plasma closer to 60 centimeters cubed to be in that type of storm. Jumping over to so 284 angstroms, you can see the coral hole I'm talking about here. That would produce solar winds, definitely earth-facing now for over 48 hours. It seemed to expand when the flare popped off. So this could be a combo of the coronal hole sending solar winds and the CME hitting, or it could be one or the other. Regularly, a coronal mass ejection is plasma, as we all know, and 22 centimeters of plasma just doesn't make any sense. Being a KP9, KP8 severe geomagnetic storm. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments below, and let's take a look at NASA's ISWA spiral before we go and see, well, let's see what timing they had. I believe they had the 11th. And over to Goodard ISWA spiral. Looks like the 11th still. Timing wise, this is the 1.84 solar flare as far as I can tell. Uh, I'm starting to think that this might be an impact from the crawl hole, but I just don't know how that would that would uh, equate to a KP8, KP9 severe solar storm. Again, it's still the 10th, and we have three hours until the 11th UTC time. So there's some things here that don't make sense. Maybe the storm, maybe the CME was moving much faster than anticipated. We know the Carrington event got here in approximately 18 hours, but they say it was an X40 plus solar flare and this was supposedly only an x 1.84 with that said god bless please share and subscribe and always remember anything's possible in bizarro world